So if, they, if you have a vessel that you know is not going to get a COI, you're not planning to use the vessel, what's, what's your next step now? I think the very first step, in my opinion, is communicate with the OCMI to see what their thoughts are. There's a lot of variabilities, you know, just I, I think scenario has to be driven out and figured out. So it depends on, you know, whether are you going to miss it by one day or two days or, or two weeks or three months, you know, so there's some variables there. If you want to put a boat into light up status, you know, pre COI, then, you know, you, you, you could do that because there's, you're not going to surrender a COI. So that might at least keep it from counting against your account. But if you get an 835, you know, it's going to be administrative in nature, I believe anyway, to make sure you get your COI before the boat goes back into service. I don't so we basically hit that top top point right there to, you know, the boats that are in the laid up status won't count, you know, towards your 100% attainment requirement. So it is a decision and you, you should look at the, the policy letter. It's the uh, one addresses laid up and inactive vessels. Uh, not just from subchapter M perspective, but uh, others as well. A laid up vessel is a is not the term that we've used in the river industry for I don't know decades at least. You know, a, a laid up boat used to mean a boat that we just got sitting there and we go put it to work whenever we are want to have a contract and ready to use it. But that's not the term anymore. Now that would be considered an inactive boat. A laid up boat is one that is not being required to meet subchapter m requirements so if you were to have a coi you have to surrender your coi but if you do it ahead of time there's nothing to surrender there are potential risk that the ocmi has the capability of making a decision that new vessel standards apply to your boat when it comes out of laid up status i don't think there's a high risk of that but it's in the regulations and that may occur so just need to be prepared for that that's an important factor because like you said when you're talking about inactive you're talking about you really maintain that control of the coi now in this case it's a little different because you don't have a coi but what i'm avoiding is when you start using the term laid up you're talking about reapplication potentially coming under the new vessel requirements it is a whole i mean puts it in the penalty box for th at least three months and it, to it, me exactly right. you'd always want to control that inactive slash terminology because then you have control when you can apply for that COI and go ahead and get it. And I think you're right. The key is talking to the OCMI and making sure it gets done. It's three. It's a three-month deal because you're going to start off with that 90-day notice to schedule your, your COI inspection, and then you're going to have a COI package, and then you're going to have your um, application form, you know, at least 30 days ahead. So you start that process all over. So if you have a boat that you think you want to put to work within a 48-hour notice or a two-week notice or whatever, it's just not going to happen with a laid-up boat. This is Todd Rushing. Also, um, just to add a little more to that, there there is an advantage. There could be an advantage in the in the instance of a vessel with no COI to to use the laid up status because in in that situation the vessel could be put in laid up status and it has to, it cannot be operated then until it has a COI, but it will come out as an existing vessel instead of a new vessel. That's in the in the policy. So. As long as you go into laid up status before the end of the phase in period, that holds true. After the phase in period is over, that is no longer true. So that is another factor to consider here. Get official determinations from the OCMI, not just from the, uh, the lieutenant or the chief warrant officer. Uh, get something in, in writing that way is, is a better option. Doesn't mean it's always going to be easy to do, but I think most inspectors are usually good about saying hey this is a longer term project our issue i need to put you with so and so when we we all know the rotation time frame is in the summer so that's just when the coast guard does all the rotations so if you know if you're getting around that time frame yeah you need to get that that discussion done ahead of time so i, I think you're relatively safe if you start that discussion now i i would just recommend that you 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 submit a request in writing and get it so it, it won't matter. The OCMI, after they transfer, the, the incoming will, will accept those decisions 99.9% .9 of the time. It's CVC Work Instruction 018, and I would absolutely encourage everyone to check it out. 
uh, that is even considering laid up status because uh, you heard just a little nugget there in that whether a vessel has a COI and then goes into laid up status or a vessel does not have a COI and goes into laid up status, when they come out, the treatment of the two, and it's really at the discretion of the OCMI, may be different. Uh, but this isn't a work instruction. It's not in a policy letter.